All right, we're back with some four-player action. Got a game against my friends here. We're going last, and there's a white stork in the tray. So there could be a lot of carnage coming up here. What do we got going on? You know what? I think I'm going to share a lot of food this game just to see what happens. Just to be a little cooperative here. The collared dove could be good. Backed up by the hummingbird. What's our bonus card? Omnivore. We'll take that. Makes the hummingbird even more of a no-brainer. That could go in our wetlands. Round one goal is birds in one row. You know, I could throw this hummingbird and this woodpecker down in the forest and just gain a ton of food. Get this dove down. We don't have a good wetland option here. I would love to have that white stork, but I really doubt my friends are going to let me have that. Uh, the shoveler. This could just be a total co-op game. I think that's just what I'm going to go with. Not going to be too serious. Food spread. Take the standard spread. No cherry though. What do we got in the bird feeder? There is a wheat and a worm and a cherry. So I'm just going to go like this. And we'll see how this game pans out. All right, so my first two friends here passed on the white stork, but uh, Red Rogue here in player three position did take uh, the white stork and flipped up the common chiff chaff. So this suddenly became a chiff chaff game. We're going to take that. All right, we got a barred owl. From Endure Tiki. Reckon Red Start from Salrentol. And there's the White Stork from Red Rogue. So, no real card draw development here from Endure Tiki and Salrentol. So, I think, you know, I was kind of looking forward to doing this forest push on the Dove, but I think now this Hummingbird has to go in the wetlands. All right, so we see a burrowing owl now from Endure Tiki. They must have rodentologists because we had falconer in our starting hand. Gain food from Salrentol. Eggs and draw a card, wipe, cycle the tray rather, from Red Rogue here. And we see a catbird in the tray. That could be pretty redonkulous with what I have going on here. So I. I think I might grab that catbird and let's get the reroll on the bird feeder. Not incredibly favorable, but we do get a worm here, which is definitely better than nothing. I was kind of hoping to grab a cherry, but this kind of chokes out the bird feeder now for everybody else. But with so many players, it is going to cycle that bird feeder fairly quickly. So everyone's opting to take the food that does not allow for the reroll to happen. Very interesting, because then now that puts the reroll in Endure Tiki's court here on their turn. All right, we got some food gain. More food gain from Salrentol. He's really stockpiling up here. He's got a couple rats. Food from Red Rogue. I'm gonna lay eggs here to get my chiff chaff down. Lots of expensive birds in the tray. Then we got a ringbill gull. Egg laying, so they're gonna go for a forest play here, probably. And they actually took the draw card action. Looks like they took the scaled quail. So they 
Uh, Red Rogue is kind of running into that classic problem with a uh, early game white stork. He doesn't have a good companion bird to go along with the stork. So really he's lost a lot of efficiency here in uh, the lay egg action. So that's good news for us. Let's throw down our chiff chaff. And do I want to use the worm or the wheat? I think I'm going to use the wheat here. Alright, we got the draw card action. Come a little bittern flips up here. We got the yellow build cuckoo from Salrin Toll as a countermeasure to the emergent white stork grasslands engine. And nothing incredible in the tray. A lot of expensive birds have been popping up. So now we're just going to draw cards here. And we're actually in position to win this wrong goal, maybe. We got two here. All right, Sandhill Crane shows up. House Wren. Nothing here really helps us. We really need a card drawing bird like a Ruddy Duck. We might hold on to this House Wren for a potential Benelli double play. Let's get the reroll on the bird feeder. Plenty of options. I have a worm. Let's take a wheat in case we see something like a yellow-headed blackbird, bush tit, red-winged blackbird. That's really what we're looking for at this point is an egg solution for our wetlands. We got a lay egg action here. Snow bunting as a countermeasure to my tucking. That kind of sucks. Another gain food action. So this white stork is really choked out. We see a lot of food accumulation here. I wonder, wonder what's going on there. So I was kind of thinking about holding back on food, but I do want to get the cherries for this uh, cat bird here. Wow, that's really a bummer that Central Toll has the snow bunting here. Dunnick. We've got one lay egg action here from Red Rogue. This Dunnick could actually be a very good egg solution for us here. And we do have the food for it. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of this. And I will take food here. I am going to burn up my worm, so I think I'm going to replace the worm. So there we see gain food, draw card action, and there's the quail. So we got a three-way tie for the wrong goal. Eurasian Golden Oriole pops up. Normally not a card that I like, but in this four-player game, in a developed forest here, that Oriole could be pretty good. The problem is I would miss out on getting my Dunnick down, and I'm kind of thinking House Wren Dunnick. And that will allow me to gain two food from my forest. And then I can have a third food after running my wetlands. And that will allow me then to play a three food cost bird after two turns. As opposed to three turns relying on my wetlands. I'm missing a cherry for the Oriole. My Dunnick would only be picking up one egg here. I could still ditch an excess card for a second food if I need it. So it's a bit of an opportunity cost here. I can give up an egg from the Dunnick in order to secure the Oriole. 
and it is an omnivore. So I think I am going to go with the Oriole here. Nutcracker. What do I tuck? We'll get rid of the Nutcracker. This Catbird, I would like to hold on to it. But I'm not sure. We're going to be entering into round two here. And there's really no guarantee that we're going to see anything that will really justify this capper to go down in the wetlands. But there is still plenty of time left in the game, so I can hold on to it and tuck it later. And now we're missing a cherry here. I'm going to let... Sarantol in the player two position go first. And that way I should get the reroll. Unless they end up skipping, and I don't think they will. Red Rogue took the split face. I'm going to take the reroll, and we do not get the cherry. That is a major letdown. So I'm going to take the wheat here. That doesn't leave much for Endure Tiki. Well, there's a common blackbird that popped up in the tray. Three-way tie for first. Brewer's blackbird, I meant to say. There's a Moltoni. Could we transition to a Moltoni's game here? It's on the board. Oh gosh, there we got a kill deer from Salrentol. That kind of changed the whole dynamic of the game. Red Rogue is still... He's got tons of food, so he could theoretically explode here. Dewar Tiki's got their column one filled. Round two goal is food and personal supply. I've been seeing that a lot lately. So we got Killdeer, Violet Green Swallow. I wish I was seeing these tucking cards and the gain food action. So I'm going to force down this Oriole as much as it pains me to do so. Four food for this. Two rats here. Sarantol is going to probably draw cards here. Lay eggs and draw cards off the kill deer. Red Rogue has just put a swallow into his forest, so that kind of shows that he's intending to gain more food here eventually. And Endure Tiki just gained food, so they're probably going to play a bird. And the Golden Oriole can only get worms and cherries out of the bird feeder, and we're showing a bunch of fish and rats right now. So, I don't think I'm going to go for the Oriole play right now. I'm going to draw cards again. And then I can make Salrentol and Red Rogue draw from the bird feeder before me. And hopefully I can pick up a cherry. So now I'm asking myself about this Moltoni's. And the Brewer's Blackbird. I could get both of these down into my grasslands. And I could change this into a Moltoni's game. I don't know. I could throw the Blackbird down in the grassland and lay eggs once. I'm going to need eggs eventually to expand on my wetlands. Tufted Titmouse, another Pab Bird. I think we can let that go. I think I'm also going to let the House Wren go. 
I will need cards to tuck under the blackbird. So let's hold those back. Skip the chiff chaff. Gain food off the hummingbird. We'll let Sauron go first. Sauron took the rat, so Red Rogue's gonna get the flip here on the bird feeder. Unless he wants a fish. He did take a fish. So I'll get the reroll. No cherries again. That is horrible. So I think I'm going to take the wheat here. And we'll deny the worms from the bird feeder. And Endure Tiki takes the wheat, so we're kind of right back to square one. Two rats and a fish here. This janky bird feeder. Eastern Imperial pops up. We're not going to get that. That's what I've been saving these pab birds for. So, they took the two birds, the two other birds, and not Eastern Imperial. So, I kind of expect Salrental to take the Eastern Imperial. Yeah, there it went. Or maybe Endure Tiki grabbed it off the gull. Maybe Sauron got it off his bunting. Can't quite tell with how the turns panned out there. Eurasian Magpie could be good. The Sauron is pushing grasslands now as well. So the Dunnock and the Magpie. And the Magpie is an omnivore bird. So I think, and we got the food for both of them. So I can go Forest Dunnock, Grassland Magpie, and I don't even have to worry about eggs. I have to draw cards again here though. If the Magpie makes it back to me, I don't... Yeah, the uh, Red Rogue wiped the tray there with his White Stork. That would have been really nice to have. Lazuli bunting in the tray. Cup nest there. No cup nest, and they're filling up on eggs. And one cup nest, but they don't have a lot of nest space either. But it needs cherries, and we're not getting cherries. So, is it still worth it? Sauron is going to lay eggs here a couple times. I'm not sure he's going to gain any food. And Red Rogue has plenty of food. Three fish here. That could be a puffin coming up. And we got plenty of food from Endure Tiki. They could do anything here. Crested Cormorant is a... Five-point bird under Omnivore, and the Hummingbird could feed it, but then I'm handing out tons of food to my opponents Just to make the Cormorant better It is a platform nest But I think I think we're really gonna have to start thinking about pivoting grasslands here eventually the tray has not been very friendly for us to try to build out this Chiff Chaff engine. We're only seeing two cards a turn. I could afford to draw cards again. And I just continue to hand out food to my opponents, hoping to pick up a cherry here eventually off the bird feeder. Sparrow's garbage, sapsucker, not what we're looking for. Let's see, we'll let Sauron go first again. 
Red Rogue also took a rat. Can we get a cherry? And we finally got one. So there we have lay eggs from Salrental. There's the puffin, as predicted, from Red Rogue. And we got a half inch from Endure Tiki. That does not hand out wheat to all players. So let's get down our Oriole. There, our Oriole is providing immediate payback. Took a worm here. There we see a black red start in the tray. Not sure. I'm going to make good use of that. The Dunnick is already going to be on deck here. We got eggs from Sarantol. We have eggs from Red Rogue. We have food from Endure Tiki. So let's see. I got four activations left. I could do House Wren, Blackbird. That's three food. Then I need food for my Dunnick. I do have time yet to draw cards again. See what pops up. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I need something big. The Mallard helps the Chiff Chaff. House Finch is amazing. So let's tuck this. Let's tuck this. And we're gonna gain. We're back to needing cherries again. Hopefully, the Oriole helps us out with that. Could throw down the mallard. Although it's preferable to get this house finch down first. So let's allow Sarantol to lead off again. And we're really looking for a cherry once again here. So there we get the flip on the bird feeder. And we do get the cherry. Common chip, chaff inch pops up in the tray. Sauron Tool is going to want that. And Red Rogue might also want that as well. He's really choked out on nest space, but that's going to go really well with those grassland engines. There we get food from the Oriole. I think I'm going to take another cherry. I'd like to get this capper down. Alright, so we got gained food from Salrantol, Juniper Titmouse from Red Rogue, Scissortail Flycatcher, so they're gonna hand us some extra worms here, hopefully. Reciprocate my hummingbird action. Salrantol is running out of egg space. So I have three activations left. I'd like to deny that chaff inch, but I gotta make some moves here on establishing my board. So I'm going to go Dunnick. Then I can go Blackbird. Then I could lay eggs. I'll probably tuck the Mallard. And then in round three, I can get the House Finch down. There we got Northern Mockingbird that pops up. That would be, and we get a hit off the Oriole here. So what do we need? Let's take, we need a second wheat here. Oh, I can't take wheat off the Oriole. I gotta take a worm, take the split face. So the Mockingbird is three points less, but it's one cherry cheaper. But we do have two cherries. And it looks like Sarantol's just sitting on all his food for the round goal here. So he's going to make a bunch of plays, theoretically. He could s start to dribble out some birds here, but... Dortiki and I are at five. So 
So what was in the tray there? The cat bird got taken. That's what, or the uh, mockingbird got drawn. Gained food from Sauron Gained food from Red Rogue. And Endure Tiki drew cards. All right, two activations left. We could go Blackbird. And we're sitting at two activations on a grassland. Could go up to three. So that's three eggs on the Dunnock, potentially. Minimum of two. I could go Blackbird. Lay eggs. And that's the end of the round. And if I lay eggs now, that's just two eggs. But then I can get House Finch down right now. Or at before the end of the round. But if I get the Blackbird down, it's two extra points from Omnivore. And then my lay egg action will be just that more efficient. I'll get two extra points there. And an extra egg. So I think I'm actually just going to go with the blackbird here. But the wheat. I need the wheat for the house finch. I would have to either take the game food action or draw cards again, hand out food with the hummingbird. That's annoying. So I lose a turn gaining food, or I lose two points off my lay egg action here. And I still maintain my food and supply for the round goal. And I've got the Dunnock coming up on eggs here, so that's kind of annoying. The Dunnock will give me two. Lay egg action will be four. And if either of these guys lay eggs again, I'll have five. That'll give me enough eggs to do House Finch, Catbird. Plus whatever the fifth wetland bird is. So I think I am just going to... Gosh, I wish this was common grackle. So if I just lay eggs here, I'm losing a potential future two points, but I'm gaining a turn of tempo. So let's roll with that. Really feels like we're slipping behind here. This chiff chaff just ain't getting off the ground. We're gonna enter into the second half. Got a kill deer and a white stork running rampant. They're filling up on eggs quick though. I think Red Rogue is just playing these forest birds. He's just playing anything he can to open up nest space. And now with this grassland engine for Sauron the cuckoo is kind of counterproductive. There we get the bird feeder flip here. I really like a cherry, and we got it. So now I'm in position. One activation left, I can play House Finch, and then at the start of the next round, I can play the cat bird, and we can just start doing what Chiff Chaffs do. It's a late start, but better late than never, I guess. My opponents aren't really running away with the game here, so they're kind of stalling out just as much as I am. And it would be really great if this flycatcher just started handing out worms. But, I mean, then everyone's getting the worms. Now, Salmontol is just sitting on a ton of food. He's just taking this inefficient gain food action just to win this round goal. There's a free worm from the flycatcher. So yeah, he's just gonna, he's probably gonna 
drop that chiff chaff and a couple of the birds, or the chaff inch rather, into these grasslands. He also, he's got four fish here. The next round goal is eggs in the wetlands. He's only got the bunting. He's going to want to get wetland birds down and then take the lay egg action to fill up those wetland nests. Uh, spending all this time taking the gain food action for, I guess, three food. At least he has the red start. Uh, scoring him zero points. Do tiki laid eggs. There we see the mockingbird. So now we got repeat stork. Devastating. Uh, going into the second half. Not sure. It's a good nest size, and repeat stork is just awesome. So now that's gotten very scary. But we got a repeater of our own. And we've got a house finch. We're going to throw down. And now we're going to gain eggs off our dunnock. Two. I wonder if my dunnock isn't scaring my opponents here. They're really not taking the gain food or the lay egg action. They really do need to bolster their nest capacity. And that's what Red Rogue is doing. He's not caring about the wrong goal. But Sarantol is really just hoarding food here, I, I think to his detriment. Obviously I can't see what he has in his hand, but I think it's better to drop all these birds and just start spamming eggs, but you know, time will tell. We'll see how it plays out here. I mean all over five points. All right, the Dunnock is on deck. We get two eggs there. And we come in third there, that's fine. Let's see a bunch of predators in the tray along with the California Condor. Red Rogue is up. He's probably gonna repeat his stork here, so all that's going away. Wonder how if he wipe if he repeats the stork and wipes the tray, do I also get to see so there's a fish crow. So did he So there's the card he took. There's a tree swallow. I need that for my fifth wetland bird. God we need lots of cherries. So, uh, my original plan is to play this catbird, but I need that tree swallow. Goldfinch. Let's get rid of the mallard. Stellar's jays. Garbage. Good tucking fodder. What do we got going on for the goldfinch? Got a tucking stuff here. I don't really see this as much of a threat. Golden Eagle from Sourantol. I think at this point the Brewer's Blackbird can go away. And we need another cherry for this tree swallow and we need a cherry and two wheat for this goldfinch eventually but the swallow and the capper got to go down first so I need three cherries so I'm gonna let endure tiki go first here it should swing back around to me giving me the re-roll unless it's double rat on red rogue and he flips it no cherries on the flip. Alright, so what do I get? Could take the wheat here. That way if someone gains food, I can get the worm off my Oriole. 
That is definitely not ideal. All right. Took a while to get back around to my turn, but here we are. We see a Forster's turn from Red Row. Spotted Sandpiper, so extra cards, me and extra food potentially being handed to my Chiff Chaff engine. So they're trying to bolster their wetland egg capacity. And we see the Galenule also handing out cards potentially. So I think I'm going to just throw it on this catbird because it can be anything. And if I get insane, I can repeat my hummingbird and hopefully pick up a cherry for my swallow, but I don't have the eggs for it. I could try to wait out the round. Get the goldfinch down in the grasslands. Try to pick up some extra points there. And that's probably what I should do. And then once the Dunnock triggers, I could throw it on the swallow, but maybe at this point, that would be a one point play. So there's five activations in round four. This would be a one point play. And it would just get me four extra points after I play it and I could have just scored those points running my wetlands does give me an extra chance to see Benelli but I think the way this game has panned out it's been such a slow wetland development for me here but everyone's had a slow game Red Rogue is having nest problems, as he has been all game. Endure Tiki has just got kind of a mixed board. Could be anything, plenty of food on deck. Same thing with Sarantol, they have a kill deer. And anything could happen with all this food. We know they don't have Puffin, there could be bonus card birds coming here. They could drop some bonus card bombs and then lay eggs to fill up those nests. Platform Nest and Run 4, things like Wood Stork and Rosate Spoonbill would be really good there. We might actually be in a really good position here, but I've thought that before and not had it go my way, so time will tell. I do think I need to get this Goldfinch down though to punish Sauron Toll's Golden Eagle. He's been punishing me with his snow bunting all game. So we got a free worm. Common merganser from Red Rogue. At the minimum, Dunnick is getting us one egg. We've got lay egg action from a Dirtiki. And we've got eggs from Sarantol. So I need a cherry and a wheat. Where has this been all game? It is an omnivore bird. It's a six point play. I would just need a rat. There is one in the feeder. It is a platform nest. Bonus card bird. Franklin's goal, really? Star nest, it is an omnivore. What is happening? Both these birds are on the war. Unreal. Alright. So we have a choice here. I think I'm going to go for the food here. Let's see, Chaff Inch can, Chip Chaff can tuck four birds. I think I'm going to be tucking three. I'm going to tuck the Raven and the Gull and the Woodpecker. The 
woodpecker could be but I'm just handing out all this food to my opponents and I just can't do that they're just gonna drop all kinds of bombs here at the end of the game I need to get this goldfinch down to punish opposing tucking and just run this chiff chaff and hopefully get this tree swallowed down So let's do this. I need the wheat. So I'll take that wheat. So let's get rid of the raven. Kite is an omnivore. It's a six point bird. Right now, my wetlands has a potential for four, five, six. And let's flip this bird feeder again. Handing out plenty of food to my friends being ultra generous trying to make this chiff chaff work and yeah I expect sound told to just drop a ton of wetland bombs here red rogue is going to appreciate dropping the birds for the nest base although he's recovering fairly well here so eight turns left in the game eight times three is 24 so he still needs nest space there we do get the flip and we get the cherry Thankfully. So our generosity went rewarded. Alright, back around. We've got Black Red Start. Interesting. That could be Prairie Manager there. Prairie Manager play. Common Starling. So that's where all the food is going to go. Honestly, I'd rather see that than a bunch of bonus card birds here. He'll burn 10 food off. That'll be 10 points, though. So that's kind of scary. And eggs from Red Rogue. So let's... So now, how many... We got one lay egg there. So we got two eggs coming off the Dunnick. And how many tucks can I really expect... To come off my goldfinch. So Selmer Tool has to actually succeed. He has to lay eggs and he has to succeed. He's going to be laying eggs here to try to win this wrong goal. So we know that action is coming. So the goldfinch is going to see some action here. And it's a six point play that's theoretically better than actually running our wetlands right now. We would have three. I don't want to tuck the swallow yet. We would have three cards. One, two, three, four, five. So we'd get five points off our wetlands. And we just gained six there with a potential of several more to come. And this will also trigger off this swallow, if Red Rogue decides to tuck there, cancels out that point. Uh, Indoor Tiki has a tucking predator and a tucking gull here. Where we see a tree creeper from them. So they could be. That could be just another body for the red start. So there, we're getting a tuck off the goldfinch. Game's lagging out a little bit here. There we got the Tree Creeper for nest space. Turkey Vulture, kind of late for that. And I think I have the food to force down this Tree Swallow, so I'm going to skip the Hummingbird. What the heck? Alright, a point off the Goldfinch. It's now an 8-point bird. 
got... We got all kinds of stuff. The game's being laggy here. My game crashed and I came back in. I think Partridge doesn't do nothing for us here. And a common buzzard from Sarantol. Interesting. I wonder if that's a bonus card play. It's another platform nest for round four. So that free card is actually really great for our Chiff Chaff because we've actually been running a card behind here. Carrion Crow, that could actually be good. Let's deny the Prairie Chicken. Don't skip. Inca Dove. I have the food for the crow. Let's just repeat this house finch. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Is it realistic that this tree swell is going to do something for me? There's going to be five activations left in the game. Well, I can't play this carrion crow right now. And it is an envelope bird. So I'd be able to grab it for round four. So that would be a five point play. Minus one for the egg is four. And we've got two predators there. Got two here. And one here. So the carrion crow would be a three. Four, five, six, seven. From caches, minus one is six point play. Yeah, I think this tree swallow can go. I don't think it's going to earn me enough points. There I have a, my turn counter came back here. I can't go back. I've got one activation left after this, so I can't get the crow down. I don't know if that was a display bug or what's going on here. So I can pick up more points off the Carrion Crow. I hope this isn't showing an incorrect number here. I am going to let the Tree Swallow go. And I don't need to hand out food. So that was displaying the wrong number. I don't get an extra turn here. So the Dunnock is going to pick up three eggs. Which is great. And here we go. Last round. Five activations left. Oh, we got some weird lag going on here. I don't have to play the Carrion Crow yet. So let's just draw and see what we get. Mute Swan. basically worthless for us. Let's gain the cherry. There's a tuck. Nine point goldfinch. You know one thing I didn't think about when I let that uh, swallow go is clearing off the nest of my dunnock. This could get max. There's the eastern imperial there. So this carrion crow is going to be even better might actually just now drop this in my wetlands to burn off the eggs on my Dunnock. Four activations left. Four times four is 16. It's 29. He's going to fill up on eggs before then. And Red Rogue looks like he's just going to go hyper egg spam here at the end. He has common swift. That could be just to get to column 5 in the grassland activation. 
So if I got Benelli, I could drop that into column five. Or if I draw into some bomb, I can drop it into column five. Burn off some extra eggs off the Dunnock. You know what? In case I see, like, Red Knot, it costs three worms. I'm going to use the Cherry here. Maintain my three worms. I don't have to play this yet. How many activations? Like four turns left. There's a rough. It is an omnivore. Put a warbler. I could play that as a six point play. There's Godwit. I could force that down with the food that I currently have. Common Grackle, where have you been all game? Yeah, Grackle can go. So what am I going to do here? I need to play Carrion Crow. I need to play Red, or the God to it here. I have four eggs. So I could just tuck the nut hatch, but I need the food. I can't play the warbler. I could gain the wheat off my hummingbird. That would be two worms and a wheat. That would leave me with a worm and a cherry for my crow and my godwit. So let's ditch the nut hatch. Let's ditch the warbler. And we're going to gain the wheat. Hand out some last minute food to everyone so they can all drop their bombs. Gotta point out the goldfinch. Anything else coming through the pipe? Wait a second here. Yeah, there's a free card. That's great for our chiff chaff. So let's see. We've got draw cards here. We've got Osprey here. They're going for the platform mess play. One, two, three predators here. And we got eggs here. So let's drop our godwit. Burn these eggs off the Dunnock. Nice bonus card. Oh Failure. my gosh. Absolute brick. Absolute whiff. Breeding manager is not okay. I can't even get the word out of my mouth. I'm choking on the name of the bonus card. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. No Benelli to save us at the end. Alright. Anything come through the pipe due to lag? Doesn't look like it. Alright, common kingfisher. Looks like a star nest play here. We've got another predator. Nice. Another point in our carrying crow. We got eggs from Red Rogue. So now I got one more turn left before I have to play my carrying crow. How many grassland activations do we have lined up? Zero here. Zero here. We got two here. So I think, could I just spend the egg? I have one egg here. Am I going to do a double play? I guess it's theoretically possible I could do 
a double play into a big eagle, so I would need two eggs. So I'm not going to spend the extra egg. Hooded crow is an omnivore. Not going to have the food. The vireo could be my PA beaver, but I would have to hold it back from the chaffinch. Bustard. Good bonus card bird. Get rid of the woodpecker. What am I really looking for here? Benelli? Not going to grab the Vireo. This can go, this can go, this can go, this can go, and this can go. Nice full activation on our Chiff Chaff. No food. You know what? I guess I am going to get one point off Breeding Manager on my Dunnick. So at least there is that. It's not a total brick. GG Breeding Manager. Free food. That's not going to matter. These cherries would have definitely mattered a lot earlier in the game. Take the worm. Another point there, so 11 point goldfinch. There we got long spur, bonus card bird. Those are always scary at the end of the game. And Sal Rintol got Benelli's Eagle as well. That is unreal. Snow Bunting is a 16 point bird. That's a real pain in the butt. So Red Rogue is going to lay eggs one more time here. And he's going to have three grassland activations. So I can't spend the egg off my Dunnock here and also score the point off Breeding Manager. So now I am going to play this Carrion Crow that's going to be very beefy at the end here. Sound I'm told probably got it. He's got double eagles. The board would stop jumping around on me. Two bonus cards here from the Durotiki. They're going to lay eggs in their forest off their red start. Sound He must have Rodentologist. Just dropping all these predators at the end of the game. Not activating his grasslands. He pulled both big eagles. So he's got low egg game going on here, like 10 eggs, bunch of tucks, he's got a ditch, four food on the starling, and red rogue is going to tuck these two worms under the swift. So yeah, we probably did not beat Sauron Toll and red rogue, but we got a big fat carrion crow here at the end pick up an extra point from Breeding Manager. 12 point Goldfinch. And Red Rogue did not lay eggs at the end. He played a Prothonotary Warbler, so that denies me my extra point off the Dunnock which is a letdown. Carrying Crow picks up five points at the end. So that was an eight, nine, ten, nine point play. And all that extra food I was handing out just empowered Salarantol Starling. He just really had the better card draws here. We had a slow chiff chaff. We had a decent game, but I don't think our tucks are going to bring it back. We got three eggs. We just couldn't find a reliable egg solution to really make this wetland sing. Coming up zero on the round goals, as Chiff Chaff engines tend to do. 
Alright, if you like that four-player action, do me a favor and hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And let's see the damage. Central Toll pulls way ahead there. Red Rogue comes back on the bonus cards. Central Toll pulls ahead on the wrong goals. Red Rogue is neck and neck with Salron Toll. And here's our saving grace. Can we come back on Tux? I don't think it's going to happen. 133. to Well, at least I hit 100 Failure. points. All right. Good game to my friends. Let's uh, stick around and let's check out their boards here. So what do we got? Endure Tiki had a 7-point Nest Box Builder. 3-point Viticulturalist. Sauron Toll had a maxed out Large Bird Specialist. And Red Rogue had a maxed out Fishery Manager, which is great. Six point Ecologist, three point Prairie Manager. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Thumbs up for this high scoring game.